mad about this. Don't tell me you got a new leaf. The cord of wrath and terrible. I'm ready to start swinging. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive. So I am starting off this vlog ashy. Ignore it. But uh, we're gonna see what's going on with the cord of wrath and terrible and destruction and alien porn. I, I don't know. That's what the street's saying. I'm, I'm just saying what the street's talking about, you know? So we'll see how it goes. So I've gotten, I don't know, 16% um, in and is following the story of this girl. I think she's the oldest of her family. I don't remember her name. I remember one of her sister's name, which is Nessa, because I constantly see Nessa name mentioned on the internet. So far, um, I'm not really into the story. I'm also trying to force myself not to go in with my notions and thoughts about this book and this series as a whole um because mainly why i was like i'm not reading this book but i chose it to read for this challenge is because i just hear a lot of people talk about how reading black love is not relatable but they can read some fairy stuff and human stuff going on do with that as you will but i am just really unsure. I don't have any real thoughts. I'm two hours and 36 minutes I have read so far. I don't have any real thoughts about how I feel. It's just giving a fantasy novel. I am in the part where one of the main characters, like I said, I don't remember her name, but she is now in this other place that is not her home and trying to figure out how she can move and be with this person who I think is partially fairy slash wolf whatever he is and um there might be a love trope in that if so i want to vomit right now no and i don't want to yuck nobody's okay i'm yucking yums i'm gonna just say it and let's just hope for the best i'm gonna keep listening to it and i'll see how it goes and i'll catch y'all in the next clip yes hi back again i am sitting on my couch as i wait for my friends should come and get me. I'm not just sitting in my house with shades on. These are my car shades. So I'm putting it on my face to remind myself to put it back in my car. You didn't need that information, but I just wanted y'all to know. I'm not out here flexing in 4K, okay? But let's talk about Freya. Um, Freya just have some nerves. The ableism is rough. Um, shout out to Marinez for warning me about it, but the ableism in this book is ridiculous because it's giving the pot calling the kettle black, like Freya, you can't write, you can't read, but you got the audacity to talk about other folks. It's girl, you high up on this mountain. You got to come on back down to earth. You can't be out here throwing stones. You out here living in a glass house. Freya, boo boo, kitty. This, this, mm, this ain't, this ain't what you think it is. Um, and it's also hypocritical. And if I <laughs> was also in this world, I'm telling y'all, I would be murdered and think the worst of. I mean, people already got something against people with learning disabilities. A physical disability, a mental disability, um, an emotional disability. Like, everything feels up for grab to be attacked. Sometimes it depends on how it's worded. But I do have issues with authors who use mental health or abilities as a way to talk about two characters not liking each other. I feel like there's so many other things in the world that can be used as points to cause tension or to emphasize tension, but here we are. Um, I'm gonna keep reading. I'm more intrigued about what's going on in the forest, what kind of monsters live there, what kind of havoc they can put on Lucian and the rest of the fairies and the humans. I kind of want a war to go down. Uh, Freya, it might be her time to head out. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, what I'm saying is I'm more worried, not worried, but more curious about the animal 
that they couldn't really see in the forest when Freya had to look straight and she couldn't like look at whatever she didn't see. I'm more curious about that, those systems, those magical systems, than this relationship going on because it's, it's not giving, I don't like it. Another thing, I don't trust Lucian's chivalry. There's some going on there. I don't trust them. Okay, so I'm in the gym and I hope you can hear me, but uh, Freya really ain't shit. The court of wrath and terrible. The girl is terrible. I feel like Lucian is trying to give her grace and tell her like, hey, just because somebody have a disability doesn't mean that they are worthless and not um, worth pursuing or loving or caring for because he called it a shortcoming and was like, I can't blame you or get mad at you for something that you cannot do. And then the story fast forwards and a bunch of other action happens. And then he, Lucian and Freya is having a conversation about something that the father could have done, right? And she's like, oh no, he couldn't have done it. He wouldn't have bothered. And another character is like, his knee is messed up. The man can barely walk. Why are you demonizing your father because he can barely walk? You act like he has the ability to go out there and hunt in the way that you do. I'm sure if he had that ability, he would do it because, you know, parents and all, but just the way that she talks about her father has no regard of her father and just, it's giving, there's something, a word that I can't really use to describe it, but it is terrible. And um, I don't think I like her because I feel like Lucian keeps giving her opportunities to um, give her father some grace or be kinder to her father and to herself for the disabilities that she has as well. And she is, she is not trying to hear it. And I think, you know, it's time to feed her to the wolves. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we'll see what else happens. I just wanted to check in on that. And sorry if it's really loud, but I just had to say that. Well, I'm back home from the gym and it's official. I don't know if I was talking about Tamron or Lucian in the last clip. So we're just going to let that be what it be. But I will say the tension in the hallway between uh Feyre or and Lucian or or Lucian or Tamron I'm having a hard time separating both of these characters anyway the tension between them both in this hallway is getting real thick I see why people are like oh my god it's smutty I see now I see what y'all talking about um do i still not like freya yes yeah, so i wasn't like really enjoying it as much as i would like to but i don't know why she didn't stay in her room she had one job stay in your room these people are supernatural beings with strong power and could kill you in an instant and you t you thought that was the time to be door to explore sis no so i'm gonna continue listening I made some pasta, let me show you. This is the pasta I made. Um, probably don't look that great, but it's okay. And you need a quick meal, not a long meal, you know what I mean? So that's what I have there. So I've had, I took this cup, I should say that. Um, so this cup I filled with water because I had to break apart another plant this plant gets really wild and i was trying to um train it to not be all wild and yeah it gets really big so this piece the plant i showed you was a part of this and i was trying to get it to get inside of this thing and i had to cut it off because i accidentally broke it off so yeah it's the same way with the one down here it actually had these two attached to it, but I was trying to straighten it up and it broke off. So, you know, such is life. And she over here thought, wait a minute. Don't tell me you got a new leaf. Don't, Coralie, Coralie. If I fought, Coralie. No, you didn't, Coralie. No, you didn't. 
Let me. Girl, you better go on with your bad self. Go on, shake that leaf. Shake that leaf. Go on, shake that leaf. That shake that leaf. Candy girl. Okay, let me find out. You trying to get another leaf down there too? Go ahead with your bad self. I knew if I moved you, you were going to get more light that you needed. See, I, I'm already thinking. I'm already thinking. Wow, look at you. She's beauty. She's grace. She's Miss United States. Love to see it. I was checking him out earlier. Oh, Arthur. Look at Arthur. Got nice, beautiful leaves coming in. Okay, Arthur, with your bad self. Love to see it. Love to see it. And uh, she got places to go. I got to put up some more stuff because the vines are all dripping down. But she's out here living. Yeah. Amen. I'm mad about this. I am mad that I am starting to like this book. I'm mad about that. Like that. That don't even make no sense to me. I'm ready. I'm ready to start swinging. I can't believe it. I'm at the part where, you know, Freya went back to old Tamron's place. And uh, while she's there, she finds out that the high queen has been, you know, waging war for the last 49 years. And it seems like things is about to go. Also, the audiobook narrator has a gift. She got that war type voice going on. And I'm like, yes. And I typically don't be liking books that have too much war throughout it. Um, there are some books that I, I enjoy, like the Poppy War series, um, even though the truth in that was very hard. But I, I better not be liking this book. I better not be liking this book. When I get that feeling... I want a sexual healing. It has went down. Um, That little hallway scene I told y'all about, it got a little rough. You know, I never knew until this moment when people would be like, oh, I like to hear a growl. I'm like, a growl? An animal sound turns you on? I'm not going to say if it did or did not. But I see what y'all talking about. And I, I can see it. I can see it. This was a juicy scene. Things got juicy up in there. You understand? And that's all I can say. Because this is the internet. You know what I mean? But we'll see what happens. Um, I'm a little less annoyed with Freya in this part of the book. There are some other things that annoys me. Like people who's trying to kill Tamarin. Chill out. That's my boy, a little piece of my heart. I don't know what his past is like. He could have been a stone cold killer. But right now, he's just alluding to what he could have done. I'm going to just stay on the path of righteousness and not go too far deep into that. But Freya, I still got my eye on you. And I don't know if Nesta should be trusted. At this point, I don't know, but I know when I finish this book, I need somebody to give me spoilers. Slide into that Instagram DM. Give me spoilers of what happened in book 2 through 29. You understand? And also, Sarah, you don't got to explain every blade of grass. Brevity. You don't even explain it in a way that I like. Nebo. I need Nebo to give me a thousand pages because I'm going to be hooked from the very first start. So, yeah, that's that's all I have to say. I'm just babbling now, but catch y'all in that next clip. So the, what's her name, Freya, is, you know, made a deal with the devil. And she is having lapse of memory where she don't know what he made her do. And the consensual issue, the lack of consent, is just making this really yucky. So now I'm just like, I don't know where my enjoyment is at right now in the book because I feel like until 65%, I wasn't really on board. 
And then I was like, oh, okay. And then now I'm at, I think a little over 80%. And I'm like, I don't like this part of the book. But, you know, say la vie. It's giving more unenjoyment, if that's a word, than enjoyment. And that's just kind of where we're at. All right, y'all. So I just got back from the gym and I just finished. Uh, a throwing of hearts and strangers. I was about to say really good and that was gonna be a lie. Um, there was probably like a good 15% of it I enjoyed. And that was like right around 70 something, 65-ish. Like 65% to like 75-ish is what I appreciated the most. I am super nosy. I want to know what happens with Tamara and Freya, but I think I'll let y'all, uh, y'all fill me in. Um, I don't know if or when I will read book two. I probably would read book two. I just don't know when that is. And I think that's it. I don't think my nosiness can take me to the end of the series, if I'm being honest. So the series is officially DNF'd, but... I think I'm going to read book two at another date, but who knows. But anyway, the next book on the agenda is The Hacienda, or is it La Hacienda? I forget how the, the title was worded. And I'll check back in. Once I do it, I do have watching someone sprint. So, And I did my homework, so I don't have to do homework tonight. So, so I'll just listen to La Hacienda, and then I'll check back in with y'all. Let's be real. I love a good secret. I'm loving uh, this story so far. I'm a little sleepy, but I wanted to give y'all this update. And I just want to know what this insidious nature I'm feeling from Don. I'm wondering what's happening because Beatrix said, look, you my dude, you propose. We about to see what's up. I want us to get into this relationship. So I'm wondering if she bit off more than she can chew. But, you know, what I know about poverty and experiencing it myself is that you got to do what you got to do to survive. So I wonder if it's it's one of those situations. It's feeling like one of those situations anyway. But I think this will be my last clip for tonight. And then I will see y'all tomorrow. Sometimes I'm like getting old is rough. Because all I want to do is finish this book because I'm liking what I'm reading, really enjoying it. But the face care's already done. I wanna go to bed. I've already showered. I'm done. The gym, the gym drained me. Am I even putting on a headscarf? No. That's why I got lint in my hair, you can see it. But hey, we're, we're bed. That's what I'm doing. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Okay, sorry that half of my face is darker, but I now get why um, the Hacienda is being comp to Mythic and Gothic because throughout reading Mythic and Gothic, which I did read, there's like this insidious nature of a family secret and only the main character was able to see certain things and experience certain things. And it was like a lot of gaslighting and religious things put in place that made the main character kind of um not trust her own voice and what she's seen and what she felt and i feel the same thing about uh the main character in the hacienda i think that this book is doing a really good job of important of incorporating spanish history and why haciendas are the way that they are why they were created, the wealth around them, and what people do in them. And I also think that there is a reason why the family members or the people in this family are getting very upset with the main character when she's trying to change certain things. And their reaction to certain things seem very grandiose in comparison to the situation or question that she may ask. And to be honest, when the main character found out about her mother's silk and things that her mom gave her and that it was just chilling in blood. I said, 
holy shit, it's going down. So, you know, that's just kind of what I feel like. I just realized I took off of my earrings that made this look really cute. But, you know, I digress. I wanted to give y'all a little bit of an update. But I'll see y'all in the next clip. I am in my closet. And um, I'm just like, this is the 31st of March. This video has to go up tomorrow. I still have a bunch of reading to do. So here we are, working on it. Da -da -da. This is a green fit. Don't look over there, it's closed, I'm trying to get rid of. This is the green fit, everything's green. And I'm gonna hope it looks cute. And that's it, da -da -da. Okay, hey y'all, been a rough day. But I did want to check in, um, and I hope that this check-in is a little bit of a longer one. What I'm enjoying the most about Hacienda is how there are stories within stories. And I may have said that before, because you're following two different perspectives. The perspective of the priest and the perspective of the woman who married a man because he's wealthy, because her family essentially fell off. There was a bunch of things that happened, but when we boil it all down, her family fell off. Now we are getting into the meat and the bones and understanding her husband's family, what's going on at the Hacienda, and also neighbors, what's actually happening inside of the home, and getting to know the magical system that is what's happening within it. There was a lot of creepy stuff that is happening. I think that this author has a beautiful way of writing things in a whimsical way, which I realized that I like after reading a bunch of Nevo. I realized writing like that is really my bread and butter. Also, I would like to point out and take some time to talk about colorism or colorism within um, communities of color, specifically when we're looking at communities of color, such as people from India, uh, black folks in the US, uh, Latinx, uh, folks around the world and also Asian folks around the world. Uh, there was a large part of this book that kept uh, reminding this woman who married into this family like you know you need to wear a hatch. She was very nervous about people seeing that she was getting darker because she was doing work in the garden and how they were just very against her working in the garden and the garden not being tamed. I'm still unsure if that is a part of the spirit in the house that is you know too legit to quit is not letting go or if that's a part of like we don't tend to this garden because we all want to remain as light-skinned as possible and you know that has to do with a lot of anti-blackness as well so i always find it very interesting when there is a book written with a historical context and the person who wrote the book includes the impact of colorism, especially as it impacts people of color or, you know, brown people around the world, whichever word works for you. The author's intentionality by including colorism really speaks volumes of this community, what's going on and how people are judging her. It seems that people are judging her because she's an outsider, judging her because of who she married, judging her for hanging out with a priest and not knowing that the priests, you know, have other sides to him. They just seem to judge her for everything that makes me wonder, you know, if there's anything that she can do that they wouldn't be upset about. I think about that also when it comes to, you know, friends and family I know who have married into other families and the families just, you know, making life difficult, being very awful. And then you find out that, hmm, this family really can never be pleased anyway. And there was also a little part that I wanted to, to say that when I lived in New Orleans, um, I'm from New Orleans, but I don't live in New Orleans anymore. But when I did live there, I remember people talking about stories from either it was decades ago or or when I was young in the 90s of people talking about uh, priests who did insidious things and engaged in sexual assault um, either openly or quietly and like hid people in the church walls. There was a lot of things that was happening. 
So to see that that is happening again in this book, and I'm not going to say that it's the priest who's doing it. Um, at this time, I'm unaware who's doing it or what has happened to this woman who is really wreaking havoc. Her spirit is angry. She's pissed off and she wants vengeance. And I just want to know what's happening because there was a priest who interacted with the main character, the woman. And the way that he interacted with her there is no other way for you as the reader to not be like hmm this man is suspicious he's creepy and he's inappropriate at best at least i guess i should say at least he's inappropriate so i am just checking for everybody else and oftentimes i'm like oh romance in the story is so annoying just give me the bread and the butter and let's be done but the romance in this story is very much fade to black there is not a lot of things happening really it's more like stolen glances or i noticed that you know we're getting closer kind of thing which i love i don't we we don't need extra bang bang skin skin you know and things like this so no, that's just me that's just me i'm that type of reader i'm not saying you got to be that reader if you're that reader who's like busted down for you know a mcchicken and a fry you got to live your life you know what i'm saying I, i'm not here to judge or come at you in any way i'm just saying when it comes to books that have crime fiction and horror in it i need the romance to be uh fade to black and that's when i you know truly enjoy it the similar to um dark corner by brandon massey I just really liked um, the amount of romance that was given into that book. So yeah, I'm going to keep listening. I have a target run and I have an appointment and I'll let y'all know what happens then. But um, yeah, so I am truly enjoying this book. And also y'all really need to get that audiobook. Already getting the audiobook. I know right now this is feeling more than a 3.5 more than a 3.5 3.75 is giving close to four if not over four for me at this time because i i really like it i will say the pace in the beginning felt so slow but now things are speeding up and getting to a point where i feel like okay i'm invested in the story i want to know what's going to happen and i'm trying to figure out what's happening but the audiobook is really good um and i also just realized that there are two narrators if it's not two narrators that means this one narrator is really gifted out here i'm talking about gifted and highly favored you hear what i'm saying so you know that's what we're gonna do and um hopefully you'll see me at home wrapping up uh this video but i hope that you liked what we got so far okay y'all so i have finished a book and what a beautiful ending. What a beautiful ending to wrap up how you can choose a path. And I'm talking about the male main character, um, Father Andreas. He chose a path that was forced on him by his mother due to her fear of losing him. However, that path led him away to engage with something that is passionate um, to him and something that means a lot to him then he meets Beatrix the female male main character and she got a lot of things that she's going on and what I thought was interesting is how both of them in a way is breaking out of the specific mode that this society and this cultural um, from this cultural context of what misogyny is, was done very well. I feel that while Beatrice is like, okay, now I have mom's letters. I'm about to head out. This house got too many memories for me. But she also talks about like things that was put in place that made her have to conform or be a certain way because of misogyny. Misogyny is not said, but it's implied in my opinion and then him also realizing that he may want her to stay but he can't force her to stay because he also wants the best for her and i also believe that you know if you love something you let it go and if it comes back it is meant to be and if it doesn't you know people are in your life for a reason or a season so you just have to understand that you know there's a reason for you to meet someone and connect with them and be with them 
And, you know, it was a tiny, you know, Salt Bay action of smut, which I really appreciated too. I I didn't need a, a full on smut. You know, I, I don't want to think about a priest getting down and dirty, going down under, you know what I'm saying? going through the weeds if you know what i mean so i'm just really happy that we didn't go too deep but i do think that this was a beautiful story i'm gonna rate it 4.5 stars myself um actually it's a five star read for me so what i'm saying is booktube you weren't wrong on this i saw a lot of people read this book i don't remember what they said about this book or whatever I was like mm -mm, putting on the blinders um, this was done really well the infusion of culture the infusion of uh, Christianity beliefs um, also contradicting those beliefs going forward of those beliefs the idea of Christianity and brujahia or bru brujia bruaria somebody help me with that mixed together i just i just loved how you know everything came together in the end even though it was really hard and there was a lot of scary things and you know beatrice had a lot to deal with externally and internally and she was able to do that and she was able to give courage to other people in you know the family of being like hey you must fight back and Beatrice fought back so really proud of the dynamicness if that's a word of Beatrix and what she went through and how she ended up putting her first at the end and realizing the strength of her mother and how much her mother means to her so you know family is everything to a lot of people so family is everything to a lot of people so I'm really glad that that was also mentioned in the book. So thank you for watching this video as I read two books to talk about, you know, if booktube fooled me and um, you fooled me with the first one. You did not fool me with the second one. So shout out to you, booktube. You are one for one and I will see you on the next video. Bye.